Hi, I'm Tim Bradner with the Alaska Legislative Digest, and welcome to Capital Views. And uh, welcome today to Representative Mike Prax of North Pole, District 3. Mike, thank you for uh, joining us today. Good to be here. Mike, uh, tell us about, I understand you, uh, you were raised in the Fairbanks, North Pole area. Maybe you could tell us uh, just, you know, what you've done and, and what, was that, what that was like, what your parents, what brought you to the Fairbanks sure. area? Yeah, well, we, uh, we my, my family moved to Alaska in 1969, and I started eighth grade in North Pole and then uh, high school at Lathrop, but um, we actually came out, came up to Alaska to move out into a wilderness cabin and live the uh, wilderness lifestyle. That didn't pan out. <laughs> so my... Uh, my parents opened up the Star of the North Bakery in, I believe that was 71 or 72. And I guess that would be 71, think about high school. And so I worked there throughout high school. And then um, I was, I went to the university for a couple of, couple of years and uh, figured out I was gonna run out of money. So <laughs> I, Went to work for Alyeska on the pipeline in 77, uh, just as construction was winding down and through startup, I worked in Valdez for a few years down there and then transferred up and worked on the pump stations for 20, 25 years. And- uh, So you're very familiar then, with TAPS. I am real familiar with TAPS. Yes, that was a really good experience. So, and, so, Mike, I understand your, your family was in the retail business in North Pole and Fairbanks, too. Um, yeah, and ran the uh, restaurant until I think it was 1984, and then they opened up a the Prospector Outfitters in North Pole first, uh -huh. and then uh, they opened a store in Valdez, and then a third one in Fairbanks, and the one in, ones in Valdez and Fairbanks are still going. My brother runs those now. Yeah. Is that, was that, did the businesses do pretty well? It's, it's in, in interior Alaska, you'd think a cold weather outfitter would, would be a good business to be in. It, it is a good business to be in, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was fun. They, uh, dad focused on cold weather clothing and work clothing and uh, it's, work, it's worked out real well. And it's been a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Mike, one of the, um, one of the issues North Pole has been dealing with for several years is the problem of, of, of winter air pollution. And I know that right. the um, interior gas utility just has recently hooked up North Pole to natural gas service. And that must be important for the community. Was the, I mean, the, the, were the conditions enough to um, really cause a serious health problem for the community? Uh, some people think it's a health problem. Other people are willing to put up with the wood smoke because they can't afford to heat their home otherwise. So it depends on which side of the equation you're at, but there, there, there was, or there, there still is a need to um, improve the air quality in the winter. And uh, I worked on that several years. The, um, well, it really got started back six, well, I guess about 10 years ago now when the price of fuel went skyrocketing. Then lots of people started burning wood that hadn't been burning wood before. And it has taken a lot of training. It is, It has improved quite a bit over the years um, as people replaced older stoves with newer stoves and uh, get ahead on the wind on the uh, cutting wood. The the key point is to have your wood cut a year ahead of time, so it's real dry. And so it's improved quite a bit, but we we've, we've still got a ways to go as far as meeting with the regulations. And that natural gas should help if enough people hook up. Um, and, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. And when, when that was started, uh, I think fuel oil was around four bucks a gallon and now fuel oil's come down. So there isn't as much incentive to switch over to natural gas, but um, 
to the extent that people do, that is going to help the air quality because there's considerably less emissions as far as the PM 2.5, which are measuring from natural gas. So we're looking forward to that. Mike, what is the, is, is it expensive to switch over to natural gas from fuel oil? It can be real expensive, yes. If, because you have to replace the, you know, you have to replace your boiler with a natural gas burning tip, at least some of the newer ones, you can switch over fairly easily, but um, probably to just switch over from, you know, electric stove, electric dryer, fuel oil fired burner, replace all of those. And you're probably looking at $20,000, $25,000. And then depending on how far away your home is located from the main line, it can be several thousand dollars more. So it's a big deal to switch over. Uh, with new construction, you're, blind, you're buying appliances anyway. So it makes a lot more sense for new construction or if you're gonna to have to replace your furnace, might as well convert to natural gas. Yeah, that's 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 gonna be a difficult decision for a lot of people, I think, you know, the amount of investment. Uh, yeah. That's required. Yep. But on yep. the other hand, <clears throat> less time in the woodlot in the wintertime though. Yeah, well, that's that's good, but it, the, the big, it really doesn't compete. Well, it competes with wood if you're buying your wood but a lot of people go out and cut their own wood. And it's, it's really at recreation and, and then you save some buck. So natural gas isn't gonna compete with people that burn their own wood. They just have to do it right. Yeah, good outdoor and winter exercise. It is, it is part of being in Alaska is going out and cutting your own wood. We did, well, I still do. <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, well, Mike, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us. And I look forward to talking with you more. And okay, I'd, I'd, very good. At some time, I'd like to talk to you about what, what, what it would have been like living out in the woods. Oh, yeah, right. We <laughs> we have some good stories about trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we a lot of a lesson. Right, thanks a lot. Thank you, yep. Mike. Good luck to you. Yep.